Do you ever feel like a plastic bag drifting in the wind? Do you ever feel... All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, I get it. You guys came here to see me do code, not sing, maybe both. I don't know. But the point is... <laughs> We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. And let me let me bring this microphone a little bit closer to my face. I'm going to turn down either my voice or the microphone's um, signal. One of the two. One of the two should fix the clipping problem. <laughs> so today, uh, what did we do yesterday? What did we do yesterday? Let's see. If I run dev, um, well, that didn't seem to work. Let's see what the issue is. Pretty sure it should work though, right? Right? Oh, you know what? You know what? We're at the uh, we're at the MVM version, I believe, or excuse me, Node version 14. The hard hat bug that I was talking about somehow I defaulted the MVM version to always use uh, Node version um, 15. So I'll use that or I'll fix that. Not right now. We are recording. We are in the flow of things. It's time to get some work done, folks. So that's what we're doing today. Um, I think today is going to be a little bit more front end heavy. Last time we talked about building the task type and ideated on maybe some strategies on how we can track the task status and how we can maybe build the timeline component by building these backlog timestamp or to do timestamp. Um, let me see specifically. Hopefully I'm screen recording right now. Yep, looks like I am. Okay, that would have been awkward. But um, it, it's this task status that I think the magic was yesterday. Felt like a lot of a lot of planets were aligning. So we did get a little bit of uh, progress done on the back end. Um, I would like to get a lot more work done as a whole on this task project. But I'll be honest, guys, I'm working on another project for another company. And um, that is taking some of my time. So, um, and that's important, right? That's something I need to get done. So hopefully eight weeks is still something doable for this project. I don't know if it will be though, to be honest, um, just being transparent. So, um, but we'll roll with the punches. It's not really about the timeline. That's not really the relevant part here. The relevant part is we're making progress and getting stuff done. So the issue we had yesterday was React server component issues. Let's just, um, I forget, what did we do yesterday? We did use client, I think, to just temporarily fix this server-side props thing. I'm gonna go ahead and pop open my trusty, trusty chat uh, GPT. The reason why I look at it off screen is there could be potentially stuff I was looking at or, um, or um, you know, searching or, or whatnot. Obviously, you know, there's certain private data or maybe in, uh, environmental variables or keys or something that, um, you know, what I mean. That I I need to um, either blur out or just pop it off to the side instead of, you know, um, exposing myself. So I've gone with that, the latter of the two. Let's see if get server-side props. What is going on, folks? Is this just a thing I need to import? Is that what this is all about? Get server-side props is not supported in the app directory. Is that all it is? So this needs to not be in the app directory. Is that, is, is that all I'm understanding? Let's just see. Get rid of this task thing. See if, um, if we could render something on screen. I would, I would like to use the front end here. I happen to be a professional front end developer um, but, but uh, judging on how this is going, maybe, maybe one would say uh, not so much, right? So layout, I like it. They're passing the children in. Makes sense in my brain. Okay. 
Yep, it's checking out, checking out, React. Okay, cool, it's just, that's the type of it. Um, all right, so, I really just wanna get this thing up and running, you know what I mean? Let me just kinda delete some of this stuff I was messing around with yesterday. Function home, see if I just restart the server if that's what we needed. Come on, come on, baby, come on. Come on, we got some work to do, come on. Compiling, 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 sweet. Nada, is that? Oh, you know what, that was why. It's always something dumb. I, I don't wanna use the curse word, but I always say it's some dumb S-I or S S S H I T. Good thing I'm uh, not a speller, right? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to build some of these uh, components now. I think I think this would be kind of a good start. Is is uh, build just this page? I'll, I'll do the landing page another time when I'm a little bit more bored or something, right? That's kind of like a introductory bit. We want to get into the meat and potatoes, right? We want to just go ahead and hop, skip, jump, and fly. You know what I mean? So I think I think today we want to maybe go for a little bit of um, uh, maybe I'll leave the layout stuff for maybe another episode. Um, but maybe maybe we can go ahead and get the columns going today and some cards. That would be that would be a thing. So I'll have this popped off to the side. You guys won't be able to see it. Maybe I'll drag it over every once in a while, potentially, potentially not, no promises, but um, I would like to ultimately uh, get the columns ready. I think, I think that, would be, that would be an adequate day if, um, if I can get that done, would be awesome. So let's, let's go ahead and build the column components, I guess. So background, boom, um, and I'm actually gonna go to the column components and say base column. Is this, is this what it should be? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I, th I think so. Export uh, function base column and let's return. And this will be the column component. And I'm gonna go ahead and import some of this stuff, base column, sweet. Oh, let's put that and then that. Okay, cool. So we did, we're, we're importing the column component, I know because, oops. Sorry guys, I'm moving a little, little quick. Um, we're importing the column component because obviously I named this base column uh, component, just column, and I'm pulling it on a different page. I'm showing it here on this page. So it's showing this page and column. So that's how I know that uh, the, the uh, component's being imported properly. With that being said, I am going to doll up the class name a little bit. So we can say background uh, black for the, uh, let me actually get the exact hex code because I don't think it's black. I think it's a close black. Yep, sweet, it's not black. Good to know. It's, uh, this color black, like a charcoal kind of thing, um, which which I can appreciate, I think is good. And we are actually going to go ahead and pop it into our Tailwind um, config. So I'll, I'll call this background uh, primary, right? And the idea here is why am I doing this rather than just popping in the hex codes every time? The reason is, is because I can easily change. Well, I gotta fix this first of all, but I can easily, I can easily, easily change the uh, the background colors. God forbid, I need to. Don't like the color, you know. Gotta change something. It's it it takes no time at all. Versus, I think I think that's how to do it. And if I go background, background. Um, See if it intelligence pops up. Background color primary. Syntactically, it might be at the different scope. Oh no, no, that works, right? Yep, 
So we see the background and the point is, is I can have like multiple pages uh, referencing this thing or even multiple layouts because this is just one layout, right? It says layout. We'd assume it's for the whole thing, but I'm going to have a layout for um, out of app, like on a landing page and I'll have a layout for being inside the app. The point is I can, I can point everything to these colors and it won't just be for the layouts. I can do it for some of these card components as well. I'll have, you know, background, whatever. These buttons are seem to be a different color black. They look like true black versus the card looks like, again, kind of a lighter black. Um, and these look like that charcoal background. The background here seems to be, no, they're the same. But the point is, is I can, I can easily change the colors of the entire application if I just put it all in the Tailwind config. It takes no time at all to change the color. If I'm like, okay, well, I would like to use a color with this color black instead, right? Or whatever hex code ends up being. I could say, well, let's change it to gold, right? Or some off yellow. And now the entire application, anything that's associated to background color primary should end up being this uh, gold color, but obviously it's not working right now. So, oh, there it goes. So that's why I'm stashing this color into the config file and where I should be stashing all the colors into the config file. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that process. Let me steal this color for the column and it's popping up right there. It's 282828, looks like. Back into the tailwind config. Nice, nice. We're cruising right along. Things are going, things are happening. Background color primary. Let's see. We'll say background secondary. That seems to be adequate for me. And now, now color wise, folks, we are in there. We are in there. So I could say background and background secondary, I believe, right? And we get that secondary color. Now it's taking the full column width, but if I just went ahead and say width one third, right? Height, men height uh, screen, boom, we got a column. Just like that, folks. That easy, no, I'm just kidding, it's not that easy. <laughs> we, got, we got more work to do. Could, could you imagine, could you imagine um, okay, so so it looks like these columns can kind of take some props. It looks like so I'll have a so how do I explain this? How do I explain this? It also looks like the corners need to be rounded pretty heavily. So we'll have rounded 3XL and the text needs to be white ish. So I'll say text color and we're not going to do pure white. So F, 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 F is pure white, but I'll do F5, 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 which is kind of just pretty much white, just a little off white. Don't know why. I think a UI UX guy told me that one time to um, never use pure white, never use pure black. Said that in previous things, but boom. So we've got a nice white kind of color in our layout, the layout's the most parent thing, so all the children elements will all be affected by the background, be affected by the white um, text color. And let's get to building. So the, the thing I wanna reference is we have this like to-do prop, right? This, this name, I could hard code three different columns, but again, I'm a software engineer. Inherently, I have to be lazy. Meaning, I'm not actually lazy, I like to think of myself as a hardworking young man, but in my brain, I have to be like, what's the shortest amount of, of work I can do to make this happen? And instead of saying, well, let me build three columns, right? And then I'll have to maintain four of them, <laughs> which mathematically doesn't make sense. But, but, but the, the point is, is let me just build one column that I can insert props. Um, somehow I have to insert cards in each each column will likely have like a category. So it'll be, that won't be shown on the front end. The The name will, I guess the name will be the category because we actually did label it on the back end for that to work. So I'll say column, um, column heading, column header, it's a string, but I don't need, uh, 
This is how you do it in good old TS, good old TSBS, you know. Interface, we'll say column. Is it I? I forget interface column for the types. And I'll say column header. So someone might have done this in, what do you call it? Uh, not TypeScript. And in that case, you don't have to do the types and deal with stuff like that where you have just like tiny errors. They're just type errors. Um, and I would, you know what I mean? Not opposed to not using TypeScript, but I also just really enjoy TypeScript, to be honest. It's like a fun little extra challenge. And I feel like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a real software engineer using TypeScript. You know, it's like data handling, your understanding of the data, you're leveraging it with the front end and back end TypeScript, you know? Still not a real software engineer. It's an imposter syndrome thing. I know, I know, we all have it. I know, especially me the most, you know? Um, but enough of my problems. Let's get into this to-do <laughs> to -do list. So um, I'm going to look up the style here. Looks like we got some... Okay, where is it again? Oh, handoff, that's what I need. Okay, so line height. Let me just pop in. This is gonna be our header for these columns. So maybe I'll say H2 or something like that, right? And these need to be font size, it looks like. So I think it's text and tailwind, I believe. Definitely text and tailwind. Fonts, uh, we'll say semi bold, is that correct? Nope, nope, looks like it has nothing on it. And leading it stands for line height. It says line height is 34 pixels. And font family, don't really mind. We'll just go ahead and uh, put everything to, we'll put everything to, um, what do we call? So we say everything before, after, and body. So the stars stand for all of our elements and just to be extra safe, we're putting the body in there as well. So I'll just say everything can be Roboto. That's an okay thing. Or here's a few that we could choose from just off, off the machine. I, I think I downloaded Poppins once, one time in my life. Here's another font that I think kind of looks okay. Gosh, what are we at? We're already at 18 minutes and no time at all. Okay, so and this this header looks to be uppercase as well. So CSS or Tailwind has this awesome thing that you could just say uppercase. And I'll say PY4 or P4 to kind of get all the padding in there because the um, um, header, as you can see, it's not like perfectly in there. It's like a little bit of space. Wish I could freaking measure it, but I literally can, so I'm going to. Let's see. So we got roughly 24 pixels. It's at 27 of height, but I might have been off by a few, so I think P6 is probably appropriate. And yeah, I think I think that's kind of our column getting together. Um, we'll have an action button. So I guess technically. Did I build base button in here? I haven't built a base button. I'll go ahead and do that as well. I'll have a base button component. Reason being, I need something very reusable. And um, I've been looking at this Tailwind merge thing as well, which is cool. So you have like follow through props, which are gonna be very, very, very useful because Tailwind, when you put um, CSS properties on a parent element, Sometimes the tailwind, like, how do I explain it? The tailwind, um, let me just actually import this button and maybe try to, can I just go ahead and start saying base button? Nice, great. Um, but the, the parent element will oftentimes not let the CSS properties fall through to the child. So if your child element, let's say you have a child component and it's like a background color red, right? 
Um, maybe I can actually demo this and see, see if we can build this bug, right? So I'll say P-5, pretend it's my really awesome button, but it's not, it's just a square. Um, <laughs> and let's just say I now am in a more parent element, which is the column itself. And I wanna say background blue instead of, I don't want a background red you know, button, I want a background blue. Well, it's, it's gonna have this issue. So I've been seeing, it's not assignable to property class name does not exist on intrinsic type. So I don't know how to do this, to be honest, um, in Next, but I did see with the React ecosystem, there's this thing called Tailwind Merge where you have these follow through um, props or follow through kind of let me download it, npm install tailwind merge and let's see let's see if it works let's let's give it a whirl let's give it a whirl and i guess you just import it and you just wrap your class name it looks like in either this or maybe it's this in tailwind merge i have no idea how it works but um in theory, in, in theory, there's supposed to be there's supposed to be a way you can you can adjust um, the parents component. I guess I guess I could just like literally make props for it too, where um, it does kind of defeat the purpose of it. But maybe I could say class custom like custom class or something. I don't know. We'll figure out this problem. We will figure out this problem. And custom class, obviously I could put in my own padding, my own background. We'll say background red, it'll be much darker this time. And if I go to base button, let's let's see if we can get this thing working, right? So interface, we'll say I button for interface on the button. Custom class, string, nice. And let's see, let's see what we can do with this. Because I, I think I think how CSS properties are working is it takes the tail end, ironically, of the um, of the classes. So if I have background, let's say blue right here, it'll take the last. Okay, maybe that's not true. I th I thought that would kind of work. In in my brain, it made sense, but now that I'm now that I'm talking about it out loud, it's. it's it's not it's not working so um let's uh oh gosh i would i would love to i would love to freaking make this uh make this work you know come on now come on oh killed the server whoops didn't mean to do that all right let's see Let's see, Tailwind merged 600,000 weekly downloads. That's incredible. Oh, did it work? Did it work for a second? I think I think it was. I think it was working. Ooh, 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 hold on, folks. So I guess that's one way to do it is pass in our own little custom class. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, if I can't get the... If I can't get Tailwind word merge to work, that is cool. That'll do. That will do. Can you get Tailwind merge to work? Um, but point being is, I might I might default the the base button, the component itself, to like let's say this was a direct problem at Babson, which is kind of funny. But I might default the width to something right, like where it's a hard coded width, and then in a parent element or some other element, I might need the width to be much different. And, and I, I wanna see if this will work. So I might, I might have two different buttons, right? Like I might have this default button where it is just, you know, the base button of like whatever we originally designed. So let's just say it's this one, right? And maybe we'll round 80 pixels seems to be a good button rounding and 
So they're so they're both going to be 80 pixels. And let me also pass in. Oh, I need to make this uh, not always required. So I was getting an error on the one that it wasn't passing in custom class. If you see that, it says custom class is missing. So how to do that is you pass in that, right? Saying it's it's not required to always have this element or this uh, prop, excuse me. But um, but obviously we do want to use it when we need it. So this now this new prop I'm adding is called text value. So I can make a custom button text, right? So it should pop through custom button, right? If I pass that as well, custom button two, right? Maybe we have like a submit button. And maybe this is like a login button, or maybe in case of, of the actual thing we're building is uh, we'll have a task button. So let me just recolor these a little bit. Oh, the custom class, why did that now change? Does it take the darker of the colors? Is that how that's working now? So, if, so why, did that, why did that do the thing? Oh, is it because it's, Okay, well, maybe there's some bugs to the strategy I was doing. But it was working. We all saw there were two different colors and there's still two different widths. So this isn't making any sense in my brain. But um, but the point is, is like ultimately, maybe the color is not a big deal, but, but the width can be because you're going to have, and maybe let's look at the design. Let me find it. There's gonna potentially be buttons that like these ones are like roughly 300 pixels wide, right? Or, or you know, however width full of the um, thing. But this button right here is, should in theory be the same base button component, but it's obviously a much different size than this, right? So that's the goal here. And same with this, this is a different size and different color button and different text, of course. So. The reason why I'm trying to make the, the and, and also all these have different actions associated with them. But the point is, is you want to have a button that's like really reusable that you can just like pelt everywhere in your application. You just always have this go-to base button, but it also needs to be highly customizable in the same breath. And I hope I don't talk too confidently because I'm talking like a senior dev now. Um, but that's my understanding of it, of like, like I, I do want to build this thing that um, you know is is proper and um, and highly customizable. So that's the goal here. And this is how React is saying how to do or not React, but um, but how our boy Chat GPT is saying it is saying use Tailwind merge like this custom class pass it in. It's custom class blue, whatever, which this will work great then if, if this is how it's gonna work. We'll have custom class and let me pass in some text values. Let's just test this out. Test for that button and test. But does that kind of, I hope that makes sense all together for those watching where, um, we'll say background green. But that's like where great software engineering comes is we, we don't want to reuse and reuse and build and keep building. It's like, excuse me, we do want to reuse and reuse and reuse as much as possible um, in my assessment of things. So this seems to be how one can do this. Height two, nice. Height four pixels. And great, so we can adjust the size, the width, the colors, all of that stuff, it's super important, right? <clears throat> so we always have this base button that's gonna be <clears throat> roughly the same shape throughout the application and we can still customize it throughout the application, I'm sure. But we do have this customizability attached to it. It's it's kind of like a, a like trilemma or I don't know, some sort of dilemma, right, where there's there's like a balance between customizability and and reusability where you're you're taking workload off of yourself but also um also sorry i had to check if i was recording i, I had to double check i was recording the audio um but also you know 
not making more work for yourself too because that's the other side sometimes is like sometimes it is just easier just to build a second new button you know and that may ultimately be what we do for some of these like maybe it's like ah it's too much of a hassle to customize and use tailwind merge for these like tinier buttons but for the larger ones i definitely want to have some sort of reusable just go to thing that i can pass a function um into and we'll even have custom function right uh, custom function and this will be a void thing and what this is going to be let's see if we can do this is when the button is clicked let's see what's the air it's throwing cannot find name custom function so because i'm not throwing it in boom there we go okay so the idea here do i have prettier in this file but the idea is we we definitely want some sort of um let me pull up a old prettier file from one of my old projects real quick guys don't see don't see no looks no looks no cheat codes um but the idea is i want this button to be did that work did that work i want this button to ultimately be um something i can change the size right so it's this like moldable shape right wherever we needed we, we got this like one component that we could always go to and then i also want it to be changeable color and it looks like we figured that out with the tailwind merge um class thing which looks like it's not too horrible to use and then um i also need to have custom functions so i kind of showed this in the last one right where we have like different on click functions or custom function let's let's make sure this thing's working right so i'll say console log test one right and i'm using the buttons as emitters so each component itself doesn't do anything it just emits to the upward so this is the child the function within the child doesn't actually do anything it just triggers the custom function that's why it says void. If if I wanted this function or this class to have like a function of like function, I don't know, send boolean or something like like some true false value. Um, I mean we're we're getting into the, the the woods here with with little time. We're already at the thirty minute mark, so maybe I'll not go down that um, tangent. But the idea is I could set state within a component like a like a. All right. Well, we're here, so might as well. Might as well, but um, I could set state within this component of like a Boolean value. Const, let's see, um, bool, set bool, use state, and maybe this Boolean value is false. And I think I think I could pass this up as a Boolean value somehow if I like, I don't know, had some sort of function, I guess and i I'm, I'm not honestly too confident on how i would do it but i know there's a way to emit boolean values or string values um you can definitely do it I, and i know react has a little library you can install on view you can just easily do it by defining emits um <clears throat> i don't know how to do it on react in transparency but the point is is if you need to do that for whatever reason <clears throat> that is roughly what you would define here in your types is um, some sort of value you need to emit um okay let's think let's think what do i need to do what do i need to do so we have our button built okay we got our let's see if we can get these things console login i'm looking at the console it's not console logging oh and i need the button to have a little bit of action to it too so i'll say transition active oh and this is just perfect because literally every button will have um you know these clicks happen to them no matter what so do you see that every every button across the application will have the same exact like click functionality the same hover effects if i want that is a good reason to uh do this right say background maybe 
maybe um, black or something. So every button will have the same hovering or maybe we can have a custom. Uh, where's our config, our Tailwind config? I think I think that would be awesome to have a button hover, just basically a lighter gray. Okay, what happened here? Button hover. Went a little too quick, folks. Okay, so button hover. Let's. That'll work for me. Let me refresh, see if we didn't break the application too much. Okay, we did something. We did something great here. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Great. And background will be that background uh, primary color, I think, will be the natural color. And this way, when I get rid of backgrounds like this, I don't have to worry about it. Or if I want to use background secondary, I can now access these two different buttons. And it looks like we got a cool little hover effect. It's a little too dark for me. <clears throat> so how is that darker is what I'm trying to. Oh, you know why? I think I think because the hover is that. Yep. Background black and I need a button hover. There we go. And I also need a cursor pointer. Great. So now we have some buttons and they're custom and we can mess with the widths, the heights, and we got a button. We got it good to go. I think that's, oh, last thing I need to double check the custom function thing. So let's do that. Maybe I don't have to arrow into it here. I think it's just that, right? Let's pull this up. Yep, test two and test one. Great, so it's working. It's working all together, folks. It's working, the, the symphony is symphoning, right? We're passing a prop down into the uh, column. Then I guess technically we could have to pass in a function into the base column, in through the button. Technically is how that prop drilling would work, which is a lot of prop drilling. It's an extra layer, but um, But it is what it is, you know. <clears throat> it is what it is. So let's uh, let's go back to our design. Let's see what we got there. All say add task with a little. What color is that? Is that just pure black? It might be just pure black. Um, and let's get almost pure black. Okay. That will be the standard color for the button. Background, where is it? Background primary. Boom. Let me add it to the tailwind config. Say button primary, right? We'll get some of those going. Uh, sweet. So all together, I think, uh, I think we're making good progress and we got a base button built. I don't want it with 390, that was just for an example. I want it with full of whatever parent container it's almost in and then I'll let the parent choose its uh, spacing. So do you see how it's really close to the to-do do hicker? We don't want that obviously. We'll let the parent deal with that. Um, might have to wrestle with that in a sec, but I want to figure out how I'm going to build the pages. So I've got the pay, I've got components. Let me close the utils folder. Does this work? Is this, is this working? It's prettier freaking thing working. Let's see. Oh, it is sweet. Okay. So I had to double check, make sure we're all good to go there. Okay, so um, reason is I, I like my lines more more long wise so I can just kind of easily see. I might download the Tailwind inline fold thing here in a sec. Maybe not, not the end of the world, but um, 
what do we want? What do we want for these buttons? Maybe I'll have the button where you can pass in an icon, but we do have a lot going on with the button right now. You can pass in a custom class, um, and you could also pass in a text value. So this will be add task, just like it says here. And looks like we're gonna have an icon. So this will be some sort of add task function. Um, okay. And page, let me build the pages directory in the app. So we'll have pages. And this will be, what would we call this? Our Kanban page or something? Kind of need some sort of project overview. Uh, I don't know what to call it, guys. I really don't. I guess this is part of programming is just sitting here. Kanban view. Yeah, there we go. So views, pages, similar thing. We'll call it, oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. Kanban page, right? And we'll have export function. Kanban page. And this is where I'll build the base column and kind of have all that in here. Reason is, I, I think it's just naturally easier to kind of have a column here. And if I just show the Kanban page now in my router, well, let me figure out how this thing's working, right? I still need to figure out how um, how the routing and everything works with with uh, with Next. If this works, this would just be amazing. This would just be different, no different than Next. Not looking like it's working. Uh, so I'll have to look, look learn about the routing here. So where is it? Where is it? Freaking loading the page.tsx. Is, is that where we just put the pages? Is it literally in here? Do I just put it in the app directory? So maybe I don't have my folder structure proper. Maybe I do need to make some adjustments here. Kanban page. Let's see. And I will go ahead and save this. Oh, I see. Uh, I see it's. Column header. I uh, don't really care if it's a string or not. It really should be required, but leave it out for now. That's okay. Not the end of the world. So column header and what was the first one to do? Done or in progress, excuse me. And done, right? So let's see what we're working with. Let's see, Kanban page. Okay, I'm still figuring out how this uh, router works. I will have to jiggle with it a little. I, I really will, I really will. Let me just ask our, our trusty chat how does routing work? Routing and folder structure work. And next.js, okay. A file name about.js in the pages directory would be accessible by slash about. That's what I thought it would kind of do. Well, where do you put the pages directory? Is the question nested routes, pages slash blog slash post. That's what I thought, slash ID. Thought it would be very similar to Nuxt. Pages API. Got it, so does it just go outside? Does it, 
Is that what I need to do? Keeps it easy for me. Let's see. Let's relaunch the server, maybe. Sometimes it's a simple issue like that. Golly! We kind of got a little bit done. I think so. I just want to see the three columns and with the buttons at the bottom, I think would be pretty awesome. Kanban page cannot import Kanban page from base column. Export default is not. Okay, okay, okay. Whoa, whoa. I think it kind of worked a little bit, a little bit, right? We're getting something. So that's our to-do page, right? Kanban page, what's going on? So if I go to our layout, should I see some of the issues here on why? So page is over here. I would figure it belongs in the same area as the page, right? I would figure. Like I, I would believe it, it should belong in this same directory. Or if I just dragged Kanban page into the app directory, are you sure you wanna move it? Sure, let's try. I could just prefix everything with page if that'll work. I, I will have to look into folder structures and, and see. Um, it's kind of how it all works, you know. I'm, I'm new-ish to the next space. Um, I know that I, I guarantee there's some next developer like, dude, it's, 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 you just do this, not that bad. So if that's you, please chime in. Please, please let me know. Um, or I will go ahead and look at a video here in a moment. Okay, let's see, Kanban page. Let me put it back into the folder. Let's see if the page just has some routing and some sort of, oh, this is the page I keep forgetting. Functional task, page. I really would think it just belongs in the same app directory, right? Okay, well, we, we are wasting too much time here, so I am going to pop over to the page directory. Oh, I'm already here. And let's, uh, let's just kind of build here, I guess. And I'll kind of in my own time figure out what what is going on, right? Because we are we are coming up on uh, about forty eight minutes. P eight, right? We'll say gap x dash four. Boom, folks! We are getting somewhere, right? Right? Check this out. Check it out, right? See that? See that, folks? Come on. Who's doing it? Who's doing this? So we got our columns. We got the colors going. Um, we got our buttons in there. Going to have to get the little icon, I think. That might be a good add today. And then maybe a little bit of spacing. So the, the button exists on the bottom. Maybe the columns need a bit of a, an area where the task would go. Let's see if this will work. Let's say flex, maybe, height full, perhaps. Did that work? That worked a little too good. That worked a little too much. I don't want them completely off. I want them at the bottom, right? So let's see, let's see what color this div is, see what we're working with. It's taking up the whole thing. I'm gonna go back to making it a little bit smaller so I can manage it. 
Let's uh, let's see. Let's see, folks. Okay, so I could go height full, or I could go um, maybe 90 view height. See what that does. Looks like that would be roughly pretty much exactly what we need. The problem is these things are so freaking long. You know? Why are they this long is what I want to know. I'm going to add more gap between them. They need a little bit more gap. So base column, min height screen. Maybe we won't do min height screen. We'll do min height um, similar, 90 view, view height um, of the view port, right? Let's see, maybe 80. Interesting. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's only going to go as high. Yeah, that would make sense. Okay, so it's only going to go as short as the um, as the uh, uh, the div within it right here, which is going to be this guy, where all of our task will go. Task cards, right? Task cards. It'll be a component. So let me wrap it, I guess. Kind of irritating. I can't. I can't use these curlies, but um, task card component. It will go there, and we'll have obviously like a Rolodex of them because it'll, it'll need to be its own component that can, um, you know, uh, be a card. But overall, folks, like not bad progress for just kind of ripping through. Um, you know, I'm I'm impressed. I'm impressed, right? I I think I think that's uh that's something to uh look at somewhat okayly, right? Maybe I can add a little sidebar for now. And that might wrap it up for for today. Oh, got a little twenty percent battery thing, so yeah, I'll make this make this quick. BG uh, let's see what we got. Background. Was it secondary? I think so. Don't need it the width of the screen. We just need width like four, right? Some real narrow. Let's see what this does. Nice. Nice. Okay. So this can be width full. And we got ourselves a little sidebar, folks. Don't need it that big. I need it maybe a third of that size. Let's see. And it's gonna have a few elements. So we'll have icon, 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 right? Sweet, sweet. Get a little bit bigger, um, and obviously I'll I'll get more exact with it um, as as we need to. But for just roughly, like we got our components built, uh, we got some base button now that we can use. I like it. I I think I think for progress on the day, that is some great great strong front end progress. I think I think I came what I originally excuse me set out to do. Uh, especially with the limited time I have. So, um, yeah, great, great so far. Maybe maybe next time we'll work on the card components. I know in the plant react thing, it's kind of where I stopped, was a, a an episode one was uh, the card component. Oh, and I totally forgot to plug. I have my software engineering course. Um, it's on my Teachable thing. It's linked in the description below. Please check it out. There's a There's a lot of material and just I'm just sharing and just offloading kind of all the knowledge and and you know and and what I've learned as a software engineer so still learning of course it's a ginormous space and I don't think you ever stop being a student in this space from what I understand um, very very lucky to have been able to learn what I have had so far um, 
but yeah, this is this is a fun build so far. I like I like how it's um, slowly getting patched together. I obviously have a lot more to learn about next, and um, a lot to go. You know, this is uh, episode I want to say four, four or five ish. I think I think they say most podcasts and stuff fall off at episode seven. So if we could just break through episode seven, we're dialed. We're dialed. You know what I mean? But thank you guys so much. If, if you stuck around this far, I really appreciate it. I think it means the world to me more than you can imagine. And yeah, let's, uh, let's keep it moving. So thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Finger guns.